Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a real pleasure and an honor to be with you today, even if unfortunately only virtually. I congratulate the State Department and in particular my dear friend, Special Envoy Ilan Carr, for staging this conference on ancient hatred, modern medium. Thank you for the excellent work you do and thank you for the close and fruitful cooperation. The World Wide Web has many positive aspects. It connects people, it is good for business, it creates jobs, gives space for new ideas and cooperation across the globe. At the same time, it has become today the biggest source of anti-Semitic and racist hate speech, of disinformation and conspiracy myths, of radicalization and extremism. While 30 years ago, bigots might have met over a pint of beer to reaffirm each other in their bigotry, they can now share their vile ideas across the globe and receive affirmation in large online bubbles. The fight against racism and anti-Semitism and its manifestations of hate speech is a key priority for the European Commission. As President von der Leyen said in her State of the Union speech in September, we cherish the transatlantic alliance and we strongly believe that by joining our forces we can elevate the positive aspects of the Internet and at the same time push back on hate speech online. We are of course aware that legislation on hate speech differs between the United States and the European Union. Speech that incites to hatred and violence is illegal across the European Union. That includes Holocaust denial and distortion. The Commission ensures that legislation is correctly transposed and implemented in member states because we all know that laws are only as good as their application. For the European Commission it has always been clear what is illegal offline is also illegal online. Consequently, platforms have to ensure that their business models do not become a breeding ground for illegal content. And at the same time, state authorities have the responsibility to bring online perpetrators to court, as would be the case for hate mongers in a public square. So in 2016, the European Commission agreed a self-regulatory code of conduct on countering hate speech online with the big social media companies to remove flagged illegal hate speech within 24 hours. This initiative has led to IT companies assessing 90% of flagged content within 24 hours and removing 71% of content deemed to be illegal hate speech. We are very pleased that only weeks ago TikTok as the ninth platform joined other giants like Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, YouTube in this code of conduct. This is particularly important as we have seen plenty of small videos of Holocaust denial and distortion on this platform. The content was not only appalling and certainly offensive to victims and their families, but also dangerous as the platform is particularly popular among young people. And as I said earlier, Holocaust denial and distortion is illegal across Europe. So by signing up to our code of conduct, TikTok has committed to tackle this issue. The COVID-19 pandemic, which confined many to their homes, making the internet even more the window to the world, showed just how quickly hate speech and conspiracy myths spread. According to a survey by the World Jewish Congress, hate speech online was up 30% in March 2020 as compared to November 2019. From the past to present, scapegoating Jewish communities has always been a despicable hallmark of pandemics, also when hiding behind terms like Zionists, Israel or George Soros. We firmly believe that the IRA definition on antisemitism is a valuable tool to train online fact checkers and reviewers of platforms and help them to better recognize antisemitism and it should be used as such. Conspiracy myths are not innocent. Not only do they harm the health of our democracies, they also harm the health of our citizens and their well-being. 
They undermine trust in institutions, in the rule of law, and in societal coherence. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not to their own facts. Conspiracy myths may not be illegal, but they are a gateway to radicalization as we have seen in the lethal attacks in Halle and before in Pittsburgh, Paris and Christchurch and in so many other places. The path from conspiracies to hate crime is short. In fact, online radicalization takes place four times faster than offline. So in September 2018, the European Commission proposed legislation to ensure that terrorist content online is removed within one hour and that companies play a more active role in detecting such content. During the COVID confinement, we witnessed how in particular right-wing extremists fueled conspiracy myths, including anti-Semitic ones, and how they managed to influence public discourse. So to better understand far-right networks online, we have launched a study that will expose their transnational operations and influence. Let me conclude with one major aspect that we should not neglect in this conference. Antisemitism online thrives because it sells. Extremist and anti-Semitic influencers like Dieudonné in France don't spread their hatred only for fun, but for financial gain. It is thus crucial to remove the financial incentives for those who want to benefit from this information and hate speech. The internet is a giant data highway and highways need rules. We believe the time has come to go beyond self-regulatory measures and to propose instruments for a more resilient and fair democracy in an increasingly digital world. Therefore, before the end of the year, the European Commission will propose rules for online services, which for the first time will extend to social platforms. This initiative will upgrade the liability and safety rules for online platforms. Our aim is to create greater transparency about who is behind certain funding, advertising and data flows through proportionate measures, which safeguard fundamental rights, including freedom of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true that despite all our efforts, there is still a lot of hateful illegal content online. But just like we aim to build inclusive societies in which hatred has no place and we are unfortunately not yet there, we must keep our aims high for an internet free of hatred while fully acknowledging that there is still a lot to do. I look forward to the insights from this conference by so many renowned experts and I'm convinced that we will make progress towards a more inclusive and respectful society. Thank you very much.